Nagar makes history in 2014, landing America's newest aircraft on the flight deck of her oldest aircraft carrier. Plus, Navair embraces 3D printing technology to provide faster fleet delivery one layer at a time. And the Navy's newest persistent maritime unmanned system travels across the country to its new home in Patuxent River, Maryland. Welcome to the year-end edition of Airwaves. I'm Michael Lauren Pru. 2014 ended with a flight into the history books for the carrier version of the Joint Strike Fighter. The F-35C Lightning II completed its first carrier launch and landing from the flight deck of the Navy's oldest aircraft carrier, USS Nimitz. The milestone event was part of the initial at-sea developmental testing for the Joint Strike Fighter. Test teams from Naval Air Station Patuxent River used two F-35C aircraft to perform a variety of test operations to better understand how well the aircraft operates in a shipboard environment. The fifth-generation F-35C will deliver an unprecedented stealth at-sea capability to carrier aviation and complement the capabilities of the F-A-18 EF Super Hornet, which currently serves as the Navy's premier strike fighter. The F-35 is scheduled to be delivered to the fleet in 2018. The latest version of the Navy's Fire Scout unmanned helicopter proved it's ready for deployment at sea. The MQ-8C, the Navy's larger Fire Scout air vehicle, successfully completed a takeoff and landing from the deck of a Navy ship. The autonomous system is able to track and understand the roll and pitch of the ship's surface to accommodate at-sea conditions. The MQ-8C has flown more than 200 flights since its first flight in October 2013. In addition to its increased size, the MQ-8C has a greater fuel capacity and will be able to carry nearly double the B model's payload. And speaking of the MQ-8B, it made its initial deployment with the littoral combat ship USS Fort Worth in November. 2014 was designated the Year of the Hawkeye, and for good reason. The E-2D Advanced Hawkeye achieved initial operating capability in October, certifying the aircraft for fleet deployment preparations. The accomplishment came on the 50th anniversary of the delivery of the first E-2 aircraft in 1964. The Advanced Hawkeye features a state-of-the-art radar and upgraded aircraft systems. Like its predecessors, the E-2D serves as the Navy's digital quarterback, increasing situational awareness throughout the fleet. Well, certainly with the E-2D, um, we're you know, up the playing field as far as what we're capable of. And it's going to be a part of naval aviation for quite a while. It's going to continue to be command and control, and we're going to continue to expand the mission that we are, are capable of doing and, and will do on a regular basis. The E-2D joins the F-A-18 and the E-A-18G Growler to comprise the future carrier flight deck. It's changing the way the fleet trains, one virtual mission at a time. Live Virtual Constructive is a concept that integrates live flying aircraft with virtual simulators in constructive, computer-generated environments. It allows aircrew to train anytime and anywhere, resulting in improved aircrew readiness at reduced cost. LVC reduces the wear and tear on live assets and allows geographically dispersed sailors and marines the capability to link together for training and mission rehearsals. Live Virtual Constructive is very important because of the uh, complexity of mission sets. You can take virtual threats, which is a simulator with a person behind it, and get human interaction in a threat that doesn't require you to buy an airplane to launch and get airborne. Uh, constructive and uh, virtual uh, environments are going to take uh, capitalize on things that we've invested in over and over and over again and provide them to the young aviators so they can get trained in a complex scenario, complex mission set without the investment of launching everybody. The technology's there. We've done it in test evaluation for years. Now we're going to do it for our training systems. The Navy will continue to add capability and increase fidelity in formal LVC training events through 2020. If you would like to learn more about live virtual constructive training, visit our website at www.navair.navy.mil forward slash news. It's been a busy year for the P-8 Alpha program. The Maritime Patrol and Reconnaissance aircraft was approved for full rate production in January. Since that time, 21 P-8 Alpha aircraft have been delivered to fleet operators in Jacksonville, Florida. Following a highly successful first deployment, a second fully operational P-8 Alpha squadron is now deployed to the 7th Fleet Area of Responsibility, where it has already accumulated over 2,000 flight hours and executed numerous detachments in support of ongoing theater cooperation efforts. 117 P-8 Alpha aircraft are expected to be delivered to the fleet over the next several years. 
The transition from the P3 Charlie Orion to the P8 Alpha Poseidon is expected to be completed by 2019. Naval Air Station Patuxent River, Maryland is now home to three of the Navy's persistent maritime unmanned systems. The first MQ-4C Triton aircraft arrived in September after a successful cross-country flight originating from Northrop Grumman's Palmdale, California facility. The flight marked the transition from initial flight tests to testing that will demonstrate Triton's capability to perform operational missions in the maritime domain. This is an enabler and a game-changing capability that will be blended with our P-8s to make sure that our fleet has got the right maritime surveillance capability today and into the future. The Triton Integrated Test Team will conduct further envelope expansion, sensor, communications and interoperability testing. The three Triton test vehicles will fly approximately 2,000 hours prior to fleet delivery in 2017. The Marine Corps' next heavy lift platform is gearing up for its first flight. The CH-53K helicopter completed its first shakedown test in April, running its engine and rotor blades while still attached to the ground. The CH-53K will replace the CH-53E. When fielded, the helicopter will expand the fleet's ability to move more material more rapidly throughout the area of responsibility. The helicopter is designed to lift approximately 15 tons at a mission radius of more than 100 nautical miles in hot environments. Following successful completion of ground test, the CH-53K will undergo a three-year flight test program with initial operating capability planned for 2019. Navair is turning to 3D technology to deliver capabilities to the fleet faster and at a lower cost. Additive manufacturing is used at multiple Navair locations and fleet readiness centers to create rapid prototyping of aircraft parts and components. Artisans use blueprints to enter a component design into special 3D computer software. That design is then uploaded into a printer that uses a plaster-like powder to build the part layer by layer. Engineers at Fleet Readiness Center Southeast in Jacksonville, Florida are using the cutting-edge technology to build more non-critical aircraft parts in-house, allowing for timely repairs and increased response to warfighter needs. Just the fact that this technology gives us so much capability gives us the ability to get that part back to the warfighter, but I see the, the advancement of this technology is going to give us a big advantage as we move forward. In the future, FRC Southeast engineers plan to use additive manufacturing to build metallic parts that can be directly installed on an aircraft. If you would like to learn more about additive manufacturing, visit the NAVAIR website at www.navair.navy.mil forward slash news. And that's it for this year-end edition of Airwaves. We leave you with a message from NAVAIR Commander Vice Admiral David Dunaway. You know, came in two years ago, and we had ideas that we wanted to work on. And we worked pretty hard on those ideas um, for the first year, even though we had furlough and we had sequestration. Uh, we made good progress and now are putting those ideas into play in our commander's guidance. Um, and I now believe that we are over the hump on every one of them. And I think the workforce has shown great resilience in working through hard budgetary problems, hard political problems, to focus on what's going to be important for NAVAIR in the future. And we've taken things like IWC, implementation of best practices, NAVAIR University, and made these things normal course of action. And when you make your visionary efforts normal course of action, you're securing your future. And I think that's a real important thing that the workforce has accomplished in the last two years, and I couldn't be more proud of it.